Hey everyone, it's Nicole Spohr here today. Thank you so much for joining me for another video brought to you using stamps from the Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber Neat and Tangled collaboration. This is the Holiday Helpers. It's highly anticipated every year, the collaboration with Neat and Tangled. And this year's stamp set is super, super cute, as I just showed with you there. We are going to do a masked and inked holiday background with an inlay frame around, which is kind of one of my go-to techniques. You've probably seen me do this a lot. I did not start my card thinking I would do the inlay, but I kind of ended up there and I think it's important to share the journey, the creative journey there with you. And also sometimes if you are struggling with where you want to end up on a card, it's always okay to revisit a favorite technique. For me, masking and inking is a favorite technique, especially if there are no dies to go with the stamps um, or I don't have them or maybe I don't wanna use them. Maybe I don't want that white outline. My other go-to technique is this thin white frame. With a very heavily stamped and inked background, it's kind of hard to find the perfect way to add a finishing touch. It would have been fine left as is, which you will see, but I think that small frame adds just that perfect little detailing. A lot of times I use the Simon Says Stamp frame die. I use something different today. This is the Mama Elephant dotted detail frame. It's another thin frame die, but it has some dotted detailing in it, which really adds just another level to this. So if you have any thin frames like this in your collection, I highly encourage you to try it out. I am doing my masking now. I am speeding through this a little bit. This is Simon Says Stamp Masking Paper. I like to lay the stamps out first because it gives you such a good idea of what needs to be stamped first and what's gonna be on the foreground and then from there you can stamp the rest. So you can see the process. I stamped the string of lights and I only created masks for three of the bulbs. You can see the rest of them are all stamped directly on the masking paper, which is gonna kind of ruin the look. What you need to do here is keep your stamp in your stamp positioner. A stamp positioner really does help with this step here. Um, leave it there, don't do anything. We're gonna come back to it. So I masked those three light bulbs. I've slowed down the video just a little bit so you can see that. These are so super teeny tiny. A pair of tweezers really helps with perfect positioning. I do not really like to mask things that small, but in this case it was necessary. Then I'm tearing an edge from more masking paper to use as a border. Lots and lots of masks here. So we're just gonna line this up with the bottom edge. That's gonna serve as our snowy border and now we can start inking. And you might be thinking, why have you not um, stamped the rest of your light bulbs? You know, removed those masks and done that. We can still do it, and I'm gonna wait until I've got my inking done, and I'm gonna come back to that. So just leave your stamp in your stamp positioner, go ahead and do all your inking, and then we will come back to that step. I'm using chipped sapphire and blueprint sketch because I wanted more of a nighttime dark sky look for my background I wanted more contrast I'm concentrating my dark ink down towards the bottom you might notice I'm doing a little bit more of a pouncing effect rather than a blending and that's on purpose I'm a little afraid of dislodging my masks so I'm kind of being very careful and purposeful with my inking. I will blend a little bit more as I get a little closer and kind of get these two colors blended together. I should also mention I'm using Bristol Smooth cardstock, so it's gonna blend beautifully. And I used Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp my images. We're gonna do our coloring with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I know I've received quite a few questions or requests lately um, from my viewers wanting to see more cards that don't feature Copics for whatever reason that might be. And I do a lot of cards with the Zigs. It's probably my second favorite way to color. I do love colored pencils as well, especially Polychromos, Prismacolors. Um, I have both and I do love both. I don't use them as much 
just because I think for me, it's faster to color with Copics or Zigs, but it's definitely personal preference. You could color with whatever you want. But my paper choice today was definitely chosen because I knew I wanted to color with the Zigs. So we've done our inking. Here is where a pair of tweezers comes in super handy again because you really don't have to kind of peel up the paper. You can use the edge of the tweezers to grab hold. I find it really helpful. You can see how easy this is coming off. Just kind of lifting up a corner, peeling, and look at the beautifully masked scene we have underneath. Now our string of lights looks a little funny. We are gonna rectify that here in just a second. Let's grab our stamp positioner tool and let's make sure we line up perfectly. I started to line up with the wrong side, so I'm gonna shift that over to the left. That's perfect. Let's ink up our string of lights again and then stamp that down. And now we have our full string of lights and it doesn't look so funny. Also, you can kind of build this snowman so you don't have to have the head on top of the snowman if you don't want to. There's lots of ways you can create a card with this. I did build the entire snowman, but you can see I forgot his arm over on the left side. I will be adding that here in a little bit. I have listed the colors I'm using across the top of the screen. This bear is mid-brown and oatmeal. It's going to give a beautiful kind of light brown color to my bear. You might have noticed that the mask peeled up on his tail just a little bit as I was finishing up my background inking. And to fix that, because Distress Inks and Zigs are both water-based, you can color over it pretty easily, especially since I'm doing brown here, I was able to kind of rectify um, that inking mistake. I did go back in and add some dark color and blend out in a few places. It's just, you don't wanna go over it too many times. It's not like alcohol ink markers where you can go over it and over it and over it. You would eventually tear a hole, but you can go over it a couple times pretty easily, at least on the Bristol Smooth cardstock, which is the only cardstock I use for Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker coloring. It's the only paper I've had really good luck with. So our mouse is gonna be pale gray and gray with a little pale pink for the cheek and the inside of the ear. Let's do both mice in that color combination. The critters are starting to take shape. I love creating these masked scenes and I really love not having a white outline. For ease of use and just for the speed of creating, a lot of times using the dies is so handy, but if you ever can, it's so great to do the masking. It saves so much time. It creates a one layer card, which is fantastic and easy to mail. Um, Any time I can create cards that have minimal layers, it's always a great thing. Also, I will point out because I, I'm sure that you guys will notice, I did not color my candy cane correctly. I was kind of devastated when I realized it. I did not realize it until I got quite a ways into the coloring process that I accidentally left two white spaces. Um, I left it. I decided to go with the imperfection. It happens. I colored in the section next to it red as I thought I preferred having a bigger red section than two white sections next to each other. And I don't think it's too terrible noticeable. Um, but if that happens to you and you have already done all the work with all the masking and all of the inking and you don't want to restamp everything, which I did not want to do, um, it's not a big deal. It's art, it's creating, and it's not perfect. So I just kind of go with it. We're coloring in some scarves and hats and I chose to go colorful. Our critters are all very neutral. The tree stump is neutral. Um, I thought it would be great to go with a lot of bright colors. I did pick a couple different colors for the belly and muzzle of the bear. That's beige and flesh color. The pink hat is sugared almond pink and peach pink. The red scarf is carmine and light carmine. 
The turquoise scarf is turquoise green and green shadow. The green hat is light green and yellow green. And the bluish purple scarf is blue and English lavender. If you have seen my video that features my favorite Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker color combinations, a lot of these color combinations are gonna be familiar to you. They are my often used color combinations. Many of, of my favorites. Color in those lights there because that's gonna add another little pop of color and just really makes this whole scene pop. I did use blue and light blue for one of the lights and then blue and English lavender for the other one. So one's more blue and one is purple. And I pulled in some yellow with bright yellow and yellow. Added some contrasting colors to brims of hats and things like that. And then let's add a little color to our snowman with shadow mauve, which is a very, very light blue. You could take a little water or a paintbrush dipped in water to blend out any harsh lines if you want to. I tend to not want to add water to things like this because it, I'm not very good with it and it, I make a mess. So I took the Wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Pen, also water-based, and it's going to make it shiny. Um, if you used an empty, empty pen, it would just add some water like a water brush pen, but I just add that little glittery shine and it also blends out any of those harsh lines. Same thing goes for this little area I'm adding down here to shadowing for where the critters are standing. I'm taking a black glaze pen and going over eyes, noses, adding in those little details, taking a white pen. Oh, there's the other arm and my head. I'm sorry about my head in the way, you guys. Um, the other arm on the snowman, so it's kind of sticking out there. Gives him a little bit more of a balanced look. I thought I would draw in lines on my scarf with my white pen, and that's not going to work. It doesn't tend to work really great with zigs. Um, you usually need to use something else. So I've colored everything in. I added some pink to the snowman's cheeks as well. My background is completely dry. If you think it isn't, go ahead and hit it with a heat tool because you don't want your embossing powder sticking to anything but the stuff you're stamping. I'm adding a sentiment from the Neat and Tangled Holiday Helper stamp set right above my scene. Using clear embossing ink. And I'm not gonna emboss this yet. I'm gonna take the set of, or the stamp with the little falling snow images, and we are gonna stamp this all over the background. To make this easier, I'm using an acrylic block and not a stamp positioner. I've also used my powder tool all over the background to hopefully keep my embossing powder only on the stamped images and not migrating elsewhere. However, I will show you what to do if you get any flex sticking to any of the rest of the design. And then I'm stamping just maybe one or two areas at a time so I don't overlap and then adding that embossing powder. Still haven't heat set it. I'm gonna wait until I have the background completely filled in. This gives the illusion of these cute little critters out building their snowman in the snow. I'm using a paintbrush to remove any little flecks that may have migrated to my images. And then I am heat setting this entire design. Make sure your heat tool is really well heated up before you take it to your paper to minimize warping. That's especially important when we're creating a one layer design. We don't want it to peel up. I'm just going to remove any embossing powder flakes from my work surface, add the highlight back into the bear's nose. And then I did die cut a white frame from heavyweight white cardstock using the Mama Elephant dotted detail frame. We want to tape this in place with a little repositional ta repositionable tape onto our background and run it through the machine. It's super important this doesn't shift. I will tell you that the machine that works the best for these fine details, in my opinion, is the Gemini Craft Cutter. Um, whether you have the Junior or the Regular, I really recommend it. I have had the best luck getting a precise die cut with these kind of delicate dies. I did trim a piece of Stick It double-sided adhesive to fit the front of my card. This is going to make it easy to do an inlay. 
So I'm using my Teflon bone folder to just smooth that out and then I'm going to remove the other side of the backing paper. It's super, super sticky. I have done this lots of different ways and this is my new favorite way to create an inlay like this because there's adhesive all over the front of your card. So I've laid down my outer frame first. We're replacing that little cutout with our white die cut dotted detail frame. Make sure it's right next to that outer frame. Just go slow because your, your adhesive is super, super sticky and it's hard to remove without tearing your paper. And then replace with that center rectangle. So, so cute. You just wanna press that down in place really well. Make sure that it's nice and secure. It's completely flat. I love this inlay frame technique, one of my very favorites. Finally, I tried again to do my little white stripes and I could tell that that wasn't going to work. I am gonna add some white polka dots with Nouveau Crystal Drops in Gloss White. I will tell you guys one thing about this is where this is a water-based product as well, it's gonna pick up the color of whatever's behind it when it's red. Sometimes if you put it over something lighter, it'll still show white, but when I put it over red, it usually picks up the red color. I, did, I knew this going in and I was okay with that because it ends up being really textured, which I think is kind of fun. I'm also going to add some glossy accents to the string of lights, the little light bulbs there. That's gonna give them a glossy raised finish. We wanna add glossy accents to the snowman's carrot nose as well. And then we wanna set this aside to completely dry. I decided that that was enough for my card here that I didn't really need to add anything extra. I let the stamping be embellishment enough. Just these few little finishing details makes this card shine. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this masked and inked holiday background with inlay frame card featuring the Neat and Tangled Holiday Helpers Stamp Timber Stamp Set for Simon Says Stamp. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more cards featuring Simon Says Stamp Timber Stamps and Dies that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.